The Trinity, a foundational doctrine of Christianity, teaches that God exists as three persons in one essence, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But was this idea made up by Christians? Is there any evidence in the Old Testament, the Jewish scriptures, that points to the Trinity in this video? We'll explore the scriptural and scholarly arguments that prove the Trinity is not a later Christian invention, but is deeply rooted in the Hebrew Bible itself. One of the key arguments against the Trinity comes from Unitarians, who claim that the Trinity was invented by Christians and is not supported by the Old Testament. They often point to Deuteronomy 6.4, known as the Shema, a central declaration of Jewish faith as proof that God is one, not three. Here, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Unitarians argue that this verse clearly teaches that God is a singular entity with no room for plurality. But let's take a closer look. The key word here is one, or in Hebrew, echad. In Hebrew, echad does not always mean an absolute singularity. It can also refer to a complex unity. For example, in Genesis 2.24, when a man and woman are said to become one flesh. The word echad is used to describe a unified partnership of two persons. This understanding opens the door for the idea that God's oneness in the Old Testament might not be as strictly singular as some think. One of the first places we see hints of God's plurality is in the story of creation. In Genesis 1.26, God says, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Here, God speaks in the plural, let us make man in our image. Some argue this is just a royal we, but scholars agree that the idea of the plural of majesty did not exist in ancient Hebrew language or culture. So who is God speaking to? The most plausible explanation is that this is a conversation within the Godhead, God the Father speaking with the Son and the Holy Spirit. This plural language indicates a unity within a plurality, a hint of what Christians later call the Trinity. Next, let's look at how the Old Testament presents the three persons of the Trinity, the Lord, the Angel of the Lord, and the Spirit of the Lord. First, we have the Lord, often referred to as YHBH, the personal name of God. This is the most common representation of God in the Old Testament, but the Lord isn't the only divine figure that appears. Second, we have the Angel of the Lord. This figure appears multiple times in the Old Testament and is often described as being distinct from YWWH, yet also identified with YWH. For example, in Genesis 22, verses 11 to 12, the angel of the Lord calls out to Abraham from heaven and says, Do not lay your hand on the boy, for now I know that you fear God, seeing you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. The angel speaks in the first person, as though he is God himself, yet he is described as the angel of the Lord, a distinct person from God the Father. Another powerful example is in Exodus chapter 3, where the angel of the Lord appears to Moses in the burning bush and says, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Once again, we see a being who is distinct from God, but speaks as God. Finally, we have the Spirit of the Lord. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 2, the Spirit of God is described as hovering over the waters during creation. Later in Isaiah chapter 63, verse 10, we are told that Israel rebelled and grieved his Holy Spirit. This Spirit is not just a force, but a personal being who can be grieved, further supporting the idea of multiple persons within the Godhead. Both Christian and Jewish scholars have recognized this plurality in the Old Testament. Early church fathers like Augustine pointed to Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 as clear evidence of the Trinity in the Hebrew Bible. Augustine wrote that the plurality of persons is hinted at in the very beginning, long before the New Testament. Jewish scholars too have noticed the complexity of God's nature in their scriptures. Philo of Alexandria, a Jewish philosopher, wrote about the Logos, or Word of God, 
as a distinct but divine figure. His writings suggest a belief in a complex God long before Christianity emerged. More recently, scholars like Alan Siegel have explored Jewish binitarianism, an ancient Jewish belief in two powers in heaven. This view, while not explicitly Trinitarian, does suggest that early Jewish theology was more complex than strict monotheism and allowed for multiple persons within the Godhead. So is the Trinity a Christian invention? The evidence says no. While the Old Testament does not explicitly lay out the doctrine of the Trinity, it provides multiple hints and foreshadows the idea of a God who exists in three persons, the Lord, the angel of the Lord, and the spirit of the Lord. From the plural language in Genesis chapter one to the appearances of the angel of the Lord to the personal nature of the Holy Spirit, the Old Testament supports the idea of a complex God who reveals himself in more than one person. Thank you for watching. Be sure to dive into these scriptures for yourself and let us know your thoughts in the comments below.